Now, on the 13th of September, I'll be one of a very lucky few people who will be on South African Airways' maiden voyage to Brazzaville in the Republic of the Congo. It's going to be an amazing adventure. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be finding out about this country, this beautiful country, and especially about our own continent, Africa, the beauties it has that we know so little about. South African Airways brings the world to Africa and takes Africa to the world. Now, speaking of our beautiful ca uh, continent, rather, that, which is Africa, so many beautiful things ca come from it, um, especially when you think about the fact that uh, yesterday, very, very good news was broken that UCT, uh, a UCT uh, research uh, group has actually found something that could lead to the cure of the disease malaria, which has uh, gone, of course, right throughout Africa. So many people have died from it. To, uh, this morning, we have with us uh, Professor Chibale from UCT to come and have a chat to us about this, which is an unbelievable breakthrough. First of all, good morning. So good to have you here, sir. Thank you so much. Good morning to you as well. Yeah. Let's, let's talk a bit about about this uh, and about the possibility of a cure coming from uh, this, this research group. How long did this process take? Take us through the research process. Thank you very much. So at this point, what we're talking about is um, a potential cure. And of course, the, the journey that we, we started um, is entering another phase where we're going to start um, doing human clinical trials uh, uh, next year. Mm -hmm. But the entire process itself, um, to get to this point where we are, um, typically, in the pharmaceutical industry, on average, it takes about uh, six years to get to where we are. Six years? Yes, and in, in this particular case, we were very, very uh, blessed and fortunate uh, uh, to really crack it in, in, in about 18 months uh, to get to this point here. Yeah. So this is basically um, a very interesting discovery of a molecule that has the potential uh, to be used in human patients uh, uh, as a single dose and, and perhaps to put this into perspective. Yeah. Um, a lot of the clinically used medicines today, um, to be able to treat a patient with malaria, you need to give uh, those drugs as multiple doses. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, a patient would take them um, three, four times a day for so many days. Yeah. But, but based on the um, experiments that we've done um, in animals, um, and if we were to extrapolate and um, uh, extend this to human trials, uh, potentially um, this molecule was able to cure um, animals infected with the malaria parasites uh, mm -hmm. with a single dose. Just a single dose. Um, and in the same model, um, you know, drugs like chloroquine, the artemisinins uh, required multiple doses uh, yes. to do the same thing. Yeah. And of course, the, the other main difference was the, the fact that um, this invention of ours could be used at very low doses uh, compared to the, um, the other critical drugs. Now, Professor Chibale, what, what has made this research possible? I mean, uh, obviously a lot of hours has gone into this. What has made it all possible? Very good question. I, I will probably phrase it in the way, uh, just based on our own experience, I would really put it down to three, four things. The first uh, uh, very important factor that happened with this project is that we had access to a very good project. By a good project, I mean um, this was a partnership with the Medicines for Malaria Venture, who are based in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And they basically operate like a virtual uh, pharmaceutical industry drug discovery uh, 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 organization. And so we started with uh, what we call um, a commercial uh, compound library that was designed by a pharmaceutical company to be drug-like. In other words, um, the, the molecules that were in that collection, we call them chemical libraries. So it was about 40,000 uh, individual molecules that were designed to be drug-like. But of course, they were not designed with malaria or anything in mind. It was just that they could possibly be used. Yeah. And so that in itself um, uh, made that a good project because it was designed on the basis of the, the properties of molecules that are known to be drugs on the market. Mm -hmm. The second um, uh, factor why this I think was successful, that we really had an integrated team of scientists mm -hmm. who brought the critical skills that you need uh, available to be able to move um, um, a project along the drug discovery and development value chain. Mm -hmm. So in other words, integrating all the disciplines like um, um, medicinal chemistry, biology, yeah. drug metabolism. And so we worked in a very integrated way um, with teams in Switzerland, Australia, mm -hmm. and of course uh, the project being led from UCT. Yeah. 
And, and perhaps the final point mm -hmm. is that we, we, we really tapped into the network of pharmaceutical companies which have um, drug discovery portfolios with mm -hmm. the, our partners in, in Switzerland. And yeah. that was very, very important in transferring the expertise yeah. and the skills. And just reading up on some of the stats, I mean, about 650,000 people in 2010 died from malaria. What are the implications of something like this uh, to the world, to Africa? The implications are huge, and, and, and beyond just um, malaria itself, you know, saving the lives of millions of children who die every year of this disease. There's another implication um, for malaria in the sense that um, in this modern age, when we have um, HIV, TB, so we have scenarios where um, the same patient is actually co-infected with both malaria and, and, and HIV. Yeah. In fact, there's been substantial clinical data that has come out on the field uh, showing how malaria and HIV, for example, uh, fuel each other. Mm -hmm. In other words, somebody with malaria uh, is more susceptible uh, to pick up HIV in that period, mm -hmm. that window, mm -hmm. and, and the converse is true. Somebody with HIV um, has, is more prone to yes. getting malaria. Uh, so, so that's the implication as well in terms of the, the co-infections. But the other important point is that this is really very important because in addition to the actual product and the potential to save millions of lives in mm -hmm. the future, that this has really, really uh, allowed us to develop the skills and expertise that actually we can use on other diseases. In yeah. fact, we're doing this already. Already? Wow. So we're talking skills. big things coming out there. That's the hope um, for the future. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on your show, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and so amazing time. that this happened on our own continent, in our own country, Africa, South Africa. So, so proud of it. Now, we're giving you the chance at home to win 25,000 Voyager miles, courtesy of South African Airways, and here's how you can win it. Stand the chance to win 25,000 Voyager miles, compliments of South African Airways. On the 13th of September, South African Airways will introduce a twice-weekly service from Johannesburg to Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. And Katleho will be on board for the maiden voyage. Kat will be getting up close and personal with endangered Western Lowland Gorilla in the second largest rainforest in the world. To stand a chance to win 25,000 Voyager miles towards a flight of your choice, SMS the keyword SAA, your name and city, to 33728. South African Airways. Africa's most awarded airline.